Big man in a suit of armor. Take that off, what are you? Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. It's difficult to not have seen at least one Marvel movie at this point. And with 21 films that have been released over the last 11 years, a ton more movies still in the works and over $18 billion grossed from these movies, it's not really a surprise. But with Endgame just around the corner and the future of a bunch of the main cast uncertain, this seems like the perfect time to talk about the man who started it all. That's right, today we're talking about how much is Tony Stark worth. But more specifically, we're talking about the Tony Stark we see in the MCU. So if we take any comics into consideration, they would need to be specifically tied to the MCU. But before we get ahead of ourselves, subscribe down below if you like this video and want to see more like it. And follow me on Twitter at 10kbill to yell at me about anything I may have missed and to suggest any video ideas you might have. I'm much more likely to see your suggestions over there. And consider this your official spoiler warning for everything in the MCU up through Infinity War. Now let's get into it. Before talking about Tony, we need to jump back in time and start with his father, Howard, who founded Stark Industries in 1939. Stark Industries, for the majority of its history, was a weapons manufacturer and a tech company, with the focus definitely being on the weapons aspect of things. In fact, one of the earliest scenes chronologically in which we see Howard Stark is his helping in Project Rebirth, the program that turned Steve Rogers into Captain America. So from this, we know that Howard and Stark Industries are heavily involved in the war effort, almost from the company's inception. So let's talk about how we're going to attempt to figure out just how much Howard, and eventually Tony, are making each year. Let's start by finding a company that's as similar as we're going to get, Lockheed Martin, a company that gets about 10% of the US military's budget. In 2017, the company had profits of $49.96 billion and were given $50,696,022,242.72 from the US government. That means their profits were 98.5% of what they were paid by the military. This doesn't mean that they're just taking in the government's money and running. They have other avenues of income as well. That's just what they made that year. They also paid out $2,109,747,680 to their stockholders, which is 4.22% of their profits. We'll apply that same math to Stark Industries throughout the years. For each year, we'll be looking at what that year's military budget was, give Stark Industries 10% of that, take 98.5% of that to determine the company's profits, and finally, we'll be taking 4.22% of that number to then figure out how much the company would be paying out each year. And we're almost done with the math. Howard likely wouldn't get 100% of what the company is paying out in stocks. However, he does likely have majority share in the company. We can assume this because Tony is able to simply name Pepper Potts CEO of Stark Industries. If he didn't have majority share, this would be much, much more difficult. So we'll say that Howard and eventually Tony would have 51% of the company's stocks. Now let's hop back to 1939. The military budget for that year was $18,333,000,000. 10% of that would be $1,833,000,000 for their paying Stark Industries. 98.5% of that would be 1,805,505,000, which would be the company's profit for that year. They would pay out 4.22% of their profits into their stocks, which would be $76,192,311. Howard would get 51% of that, which would be $38,858,078.61. From here, we'll do some tax math. And taxes were much harsher for people making more money back in the 40s and 50s. After taxes, Howard would make $8,160,196.51 in 1939. Now let's talk about how we're spreading their money around. For starters, we'll be taking 20% of what Howard or Tony is making each year and giving that to charity. We know that Stark Industries is deeply involved with many charities, so I don't think that's a stretch. We'll be having him put the majority of his income, 70%, into various investments that will be giving him an average return of 15% each year. The remaining 10% will be split up with 5% going to a bank account and the last 5% being his general living expenses. Because of all these numbers and how long it would take to explain each year, we won't be going through each and every year in a similar fashion. Instead, I'll just be talking about some major points and things going on through the next roughly 60 years. So the following year, 1940, we'll have Howard buy his mansion, a similar place today in New York can go for around $68 million. We'll adjust that back to what it would have been worth in 1940 going off of New York real estate prices. That building would cost $503,200, which we'll be taking out of what he's making that year. I think this is also the year that he would hire his butler Jarvis. No, not the Jarvis you're probably thinking of, an actual person named Jarvis 
who the famed AI is eventually named after. We'll be giving him a relatively large salary of $200,000 per year, mostly because Howard can easily afford it. So coming out of 1940, Howard has $15,091,016.13 in investments and $941,355.67 in his bank account. From this point on, we can really kind of fast forward through the majority of Howard's time as CEO because he's making enough money each year that his expenses are pretty easily covered by the 5% he's living on. Then let's jump up to 1991 when Howard and Maria are killed by the Winter Soldier. Tony would be left all of Stark's business investments and their bank account. Because of how massive their bank account is, it would be subject to an inheritance tax. New York's inheritance tax is 16% for any amount over $10,100,000. So even after paying the 16% tax, Tony is still inheriting $1,271,503,735.33. As far as their investments go, as long as Tony doesn't start selling any of the investments, he isn't immediately subject to taxes. Now let's skip ahead to 1994 when we'll be assuming Jarvis dies. We don't really know when exactly Jarvis dies, but it makes sense that he dies around here having basically raised Tony and by this point, Tony has really started coming into his own. So after this point, Tony will no longer be spending $200,000 per year on his butler. From here, we can fast forward up to the start of the MCU, 2008. This is the year that Tony Stark is kidnapped, becomes Iron Man, and shuts down the Stark Industries Weapons Division. So let's start with that last point, shutting down the Weapons Division. We know that this was a huge part of Stark Industries' profits. However, by becoming Iron Man and thus becoming a much more brandable name, as well as getting into renewable energy, this obviously wouldn't be a death sentence for Stark Industries. So what I'll be doing is taking off a little over 20% of what Stark Industries is likely still making each year. Now let's talk about Iron Man suits. Gizmodo ran the numbers on how much an Iron Man suit might cost to make an estimated one at $100,420,000. By Infinity War, he is sporting his Mark 50 Iron Man suit. This would lead me to believe that he's created 49 other suits during his time as Iron Man, with the first being the one he creates in the cave. This gives us a total of 49. So we'll figure out the cost of the suits as a whole. We'll do the first 10 suits at the $100 million mark, we'll double that amount for the next 20, and finally we'll triple the original $100 million mark for the final 19 suits. This is to try and account for the suits getting more and more complex and intricate as Tony keeps building them. This means Tony spent $10,744,000,000 on his suits. But we're not quite done yet because Tony also has five Iron Legion drones. We'll estimate those at the same price point as the most expensive Iron Man suits. This brings his suit total up to $12,251,240,000. For simplicity's sake, we'll divide that evenly across 10 years following 2008 when Tony officially becomes Iron Man. We'll also be having Tony continue to donate to various charities after this year. However, because the bulk of his current income is going into creating new Iron Man suits, we'll just be taking off $200 million each year, which is pretty similar to what he was previously paying out. And again, because he has much less income freed up due to the whole being Iron Man thing, we'll be taking off $70 million each year for his living expenses. So from this point on, Tony's actually going to be going through all the money that he is personally making from Stark Industries. Luckily, however, he has more than enough money still in his bank account and investments. Now let's get into the Avengers, or at least how much the Avengers cost. I mean, Tony at one point even says, Oh, actually, he's the boss. I just pay for everything and design everything and make everyone look cooler. Originally, I'll be having Tony put $100 million each year into the Avengers initiative. Let's jump ahead again to 2015, which is when Age of Ultron takes place. Following this film, the Avengers are moved to a new compound and Avengers Tower is renamed Stark Tower. The facility they are moved to is an old Stark industry warehouse that's been converted. I'll also have Tony start spending more money on the Avengers from this point onward since he had his vision. We'll be bumping him up to spending $500 million each year. So by the next year, 2016, Tony actually would have to take money out of the investments that he and his father spent over 70 years building up. We'll have him cash in $1 billion worth of investments. He would pay 35% of that in taxes. And in the next year, he'll have to take out $2 billion and pay the same percentage of taxes again. And that's where we'll end our math. By Infinity War, Tony has $341,275,539.29 in his bank account and a staggering $21,526,611,891,782.40. Which gives Tony Stark a grand total of $21,527,021,167,000 
$321.70, which actually makes Tony Stark the fourth richest country in the world, right between Japan and Germany. That's actually a good thing, considering he has essentially been bankrolling the Avengers since their inception, and even that has barely put a dent in his money. But anyways, this has been 10K Bill, and thanks for watching. If you like this show and want to see more of it, consider supporting us on our Patreon. You can even get your name on the screen. Comment down below what you'd like to hear me talk about next, and make sure you subscribe for all your entertainment-related content.